Welcome to Bulga Socks TV. We've got lots of classic and original TV shows. Subscribe now and enjoy the video. because I've got to get back here to prepare for the egg hunt later. Did I hear someone say egg hunt? Yes, Grandpa. The children are coming back here for an egg hunt and a bit of a party in the meadow later. Wonderful. I wish I could come to the make and do day with you. But you can't, Grandpa, because you are helping me with sandwiches. Right, come on, otherwise we're going to be late. You've got your work cut out, Jemima, because Belinda Lucinda's going to be there. Oh, no. Belinda Lucinda spoils everything. Belinda Lucinda? Poor Jemima. If Belinda Lucinda's going to be there, she's going to need my help. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! When Grandpa shrinks, he can run really fast. Like this. And this. into things, he can get under things, but most amazing of all is that his magic can make things go. <laughs> like my helicopter and our cousin Jason's plane. Sometimes he chuffs about in the Sunny Sands train and he can even make my Mrs Ostrich fly. Oh yes, Grandpa can get anywhere he likes. But today he was coming with us in Joshy's pocket. Hurry up, you two! Ah, oh, Grandpa gone for a little lie down, eh? To get out of making the sandwiches, I guess. Come on! I picked up my pencil tin and ran. So off we all went in Campo to Miss Smiley's cafe, and Jemima said, "I hope Belinda Lucinda doesn't spoil everything." And Uncle CJ said. Oh, I'm sure she won't be my mum. But Uncle CJ was wrong. At Miss Smiley's cafe, before long, everyone had settled down to make their springtime things. But Belinda Lucinda was not happy. She was doing this. Mine! Grandpa was watching and he didn't like what he saw. My friend Connor and I were making egg cosy chicks. I'll help. Ah, oh, little Connor needs help with the glue. Don't be nasty, Belinda Lucinda. 
some of the others were making bonnets and hats. Those are rubbish. No, they're not. Mine's the best. I was with Rosie and Emily, and we were making little puppet bunnies. They're magic bunnies to go inside the chocolate eggs. I love the idea of magic bunnies. <laughs> Who ever heard of a magic bunny? Stupid. Don't be mean, Belinda Lucinda. Concentrate on your lovely bonnet. But Belinda Lucinda grabbed some feathers and Connor said... Hey, I was going to use them. Hard luck, I got there first. You need to share, Belinda Lucinda. Grandpa couldn't just stand by and watch for a moment longer. So he jumped off the shelf, ran across the floor, climbed up the table leg and hid behind my pencil tin. Belinda Lucinda was drawing a picture of a chick to stick on her bonnet. I need crayons. She had her eye on my tin. Grandpa got away just before she grabbed it. That was close. Belinda Lucinda, you should learn to ask nicely. Whatever. Right. Time for action. And Grandpa jumped back onto the table. <laughs> Just then, Miss Smiley came in with the chocolate eggs. All right, everyone. Here are the eggs, and we're going to put the little magic bunnies you've all made inside them. Huh, magic bunnies. Everyone was getting really fed up with Belinda Lucinda, but then Mr Whoops came in with a basket of bits and went. Mr <laughs> everyone went to help Mr Whoops. She went to see if she could use any of his bits and bobs. Grandpa ran across the table to the crayon tin. And everyone was so busy, they didn't see him push it back to my place. Quick, Grandpa, hide! Just then, Belinda Lucinda came back to the table. Who moved the pencil tin? Not me, I was helping Mr Woods. Well, somebody did. It can't just move on its own. Then she grabbed it. Don't grab it, Belinda Lucinda. But I'm using it. And she took it. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. You were the only one here. You must have done. Come in here with me and calm down. Come on. Jemima took Belinda Lucinda to the storeroom to calm her down. All right. We can all start putting our little magic bunnies into our eggs now. <laughs> magic bunnies are just stupid. We'll see about that. While well, everyone else went to the counter, I had a word with Grandpa. What's the plan, Grandpa? Who says bunnies can't be magic, eh? I'm going to need your help. Pass me your bunny. I'm getting in the bunny, and I'm going in an egg. And Grandpa crawled into the little bunny. Everyone had put a bunny into the half egg. Miss Smiley put the other half on top and Mr Whoops wrapped it up. Here's one for Belinda's egg. Luckily, Miss Smiley didn't notice Grandpa's feet. Mr Whoops wrapped the egg in yellow paper and just then, Belinda Lucinda came back. Oh, we've put your rabbit in an egg for you, dear. It's the yellow one, just so you know when it comes to the egg hunt. I don't care about magic bunnies or egg hunts or girls who move pencil tins. I hate Miss Smiley's make and do day. Uncle CJ came to take us home. So off we went through the country lanes, over the bridge, through the falls, and back to the mill on the marsh. We were looking forward to the party with all our friends and the egg hunt. We were hoping Belinda and Lucinda wouldn't spoil that. Uncle CJ had got everything ready, and soon Jemima had hidden all the eggs. Keep looking, there's plenty to find. Well done, Dad. You've done a great job. Did Grandpa help? No. Grandpa's been having the longest lie down ever. I haven't seen him all day, Jemima. At that moment, we heard. Found it! Found my egg. I'm first. And Belinda Lucinda skipped off into the courtyard. She's in for a big surprise. <laughs> Josh was right. Belinda Lucinda sat all by herself eating her egg. Then she said, huh, Who needs a magic bunny? I just want to eat all the chocolate. Oh, you do, do you? Yep. Who said that? Hello? Hello? Belinda Lucinda couldn't believe her eyes. What? Was this a magic bunny after all? 
Yes, it's me. But... The magic bunny. But magic bunnies are rubbish. Oh, we're not rubbish. So tell me, you having a nice time? No. No, I'm having a horrid time. Well, you know what? People who don't share properly or be nice to everyone else always end up having a horrid time. So if I were you, I'd say sorry to everyone and be nice for the rest of the day. OK, I'll try. I really will. Good. And the first thing you do is to give me to Elsie and say sorry for accusing her of moving the tin. Which she didn't. I did. Oh. Uh, right. I will. So, Belinda Lucinda gave Grandpa in a bunny, in an egg, to Elsie. You can have my bunny and the chocolate. I'm really sorry I was horrid. I know you didn't move the tin. Thanks. And Elsie ran inside with Grandpa as fast as she could. And Belinda and Lucinda was nice to everyone at last. Cut off, Grandpa. Quick. We did it. We taught Belinda and Lucinda a lesson. Well, you did it, Grandpa. I couldn't have done it without your help. Teamwork, I call it. Teamwork. <laughs> Grandpa, you're up. You missed the egg hunt. Everybody's gone home except for Belinda Lucinda. She's waiting for her mum. Did you have a lovely day? I did in the end, because the magic bunny taught me how to. Oh? How's that? You have to be kind to people and learn how to share. I gave my bunny to Elsie. I know. You can have this, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> So Mrs. Pufferbank handed him a balloon. But when he tried to blow the balloon up, the lever was stuck. Mr. Mentor, the inventor. Yes. He lives in the lighthouse at Sunny Sands. He is a wonderful man. Once I um, had a few issues and uh, my balloon pump broke. And Mr. Mentor, he, he made me a whole new balloon pump. It was wonderful. Fantastic. So, I think I should send him a gift to say thank you. To say thank you for helping me. So, I'm going to make him a balloon animal. I'm going to make him a very lovely balloon rabbit. I think he'll love a balloon rabbit. Would you like to learn how to make one too? You would. Fantastic. So we have our wiggly balloon and we place it on our puffa 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 pump and we pull back and we puff, 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 and we let a bit of air out and we leave about that much in the end. There we go. And we make a little nose like that. Now rabbits have very big ears. One ear. Two ears. There we are. And our rabbit's going to have a little neck and some legs. So it can hop about. And then it has a little body. And then this bit we're going to do a big circle because he's going to be sitting up. And then we place our rabbit's legs in the front here. So he can just sit there. Oh, he's going to be lovely on Mr. Benton's desk. So while he's inventing, the rabbit can sit there and watch him. Oh, oh, I do hope he likes it. And I hope you liked it too. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye now. Goodbye. So 
Here it is one more time. Take the balloon, pump it up, leave a bit of air in the end, let a bit of air out and tie it in a knot. You make a small bubble and then a bigger bubble and then a second bigger bubble and give it a twist to make the ears. Then a small neck, a bubble for the legs, and another bubble for the second leg, and then a third bubble for the body. Then you make a big loop and give it a twist to make the back legs and the bunny tail. He places the front legs into the bottom's loop and he should sit nicely for you. Ta-da! Missed Sheepdog Tales Missed the Sheepdog was born on a foggy night in a barn on Borough Farm. As she grew up, she had many adventures with her brother and sister, <laughs> with lambs, get back, get back, back. Okay, okay, I'm going. With rams. Get off my land! Yeah. With ducks. Oh, steady on. <laughs> but nothing was as exciting as becoming a proper working sheepdog and joining the rest of the Borough Farm dogs. Gail, with her speckled nose, is Mist's mum and is hard working and caring. Orange faced Auntie Swift is the oldest dog in the pack and the wisest. She never goes anywhere without her son, the broad-headed, wide-shouldered Ernie. He is the toughest, strongest member of the team. Wolf-like, wily Fern has the best hearing of them all. She is very proud of her amazing pointy ears. And Uncle Jake has one ear that goes up, one that goes down, unusually long legs, and eats anything he finds. Especially if it's brown. For her first year, Mist struggled to show that she was good enough to be the sixth member of this team. Steady up! No, Mist! Stop there! Hey! That's enough of that! But she finally succeeded by saving an angry ram who was stuck on a rock face. In the depths of the fog, on that dangerous cliff ledge, Mist proved that she was a brave, clever sheepdog. That grey winter is now over, and the gorse bushes have burst into yellow flower. The rabbits celebrate the spring air by springing in the air. The swallows dip and dive into fresh April puddles, and of course there are lambs in every direction. The flock are keeping the shepherd and his dogs very busy. This morning, Fern is helping the boss as he feeds the sheep. Wait, wait, wait! Steady. Gail is out on the cliffs. Yeah, take, take it easy. There you go. And Swift and Ernie are dealing with a ewe and lamb who are hiding. That's it. Cold, huh? Down the side. Yeah. Oh, watch it, Ernie. Chill out. I've got it. Excellent. Jake is making sure that the newborn lambs are safe in the barn. Oh! Oh, watch out! Oh, they're going the wrong way! Oi! You lot! The bird's behind you! Oh, right, I suppose I'll have to sort them out myself. Here we go! Jake's job is made difficult because this you, like most sheep, doesn't understand that he is here to help her. Right! About turn! That's 
lovely. Now you're all heading the right way now. You'll be back at the barn in the shape of a lamb's tail. No, 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 hang on. Eh? No, you're going the wrong way now. It's the other way. That's right. Right, 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 wrong. Wrong. Right, 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 wrong. Other way. Go to the. No, that's other way. Other way. And of course it's Jake now. Jake coming up the front. Jake coming up the front. No, round here, round here. Careful of that mole. I nearly fell in it yesterday. Oh, see, nice and warm when you get in there, isn't it? Do you think I enjoy running after you like a mad thing? I do actually. Oh, I love it. Uncle Jake. Oh, hello, Mist. Come on, it's our turn to do the lost lamb lookout. Sitting on a rock, keeping lookout for lost lambs, sounds like an easy job. But Jake and Mist find lying around doing nothing very difficult. Spring has sprung, the grass says res. I wonder where the birdies is. Mm. Have you spotted any yet, Uncle Jake? No. Looks like they're all safe with their mums. Yeah. Doesn't look like they need any help from us. Oh, no, look! I think we're in Mucklist. That little fella can't find his mum anywhere. I've got my own to worry about. Now, out of our way. You're not one of mine. Go find your own mother. Dear, he is in a pickle. Now, where's his mum? Oh, oh, that must be her down this side. Oh, no, it's wool-brained Wendy. <coughs> She'd forget her hooves if they weren't on the end of her legs. Right-o. I'll get the babber. And I'll get the mother. See you back here. Easy. Mist and Jake sped away to gather the ewe and the lamb, but found that they had already hidden in a maze of yellow bushes. Now, where is she? Here. Oh, oh no, this way, this way. <coughs> No, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. oh Wendy, no. calm down. Oh, oh, We're trying to go help. Away. Go away. Little Dapper, here, where are you? Bleat if you can hear me. Meh. Oh, no, that was me. Now then, Wendy, you need to answer a few questions so we can get you back to your lamb. So, firstly, what's your little chap's name? Can't remember. All right. Well, where did you last see your son? Can't remember. Okay. When did you last see him? Can't remember. Well, uh, where do you and your lamb like to graze? Oh, um, I think, oh, um, can't remember. Oh dear. I hope Uncle Jake's doing better than me. Now where is he? Where is he? Oh, there he is on the cliffs, right? Oh, I just go around the back of him. Hup, did he? Well, oh, there he is now. Now let's go. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no, no. Oh, he's on the move. Don't panic, little lamb. Whatever you do, don't panic. Oh, he panicked. Um, right, I suppose I'd better uh, follow him then. Oh, did he? <laughs> Creepy crawly through the undergrowth, you know. There he is. Oh, poor little thing. He must be as scared as... Oh, I just dribbled. I suppose I'd better just go just around there. If you go down to the woods tonight, you're sure of a big surprise. There's Jake the sheep, the worker, long legs and lovely big brown eyes, and out we go. Oh, listen to him calling for his mum. It's all right, Mr. Weather. I'm taking you back there. There we go. Tippy toes, tippy toes, that's it. Hand drop. He's gonna come down the hill a bit more. Don't, oh, it's all right, it's all right. Don't run, don't run. In fact, I'll just hide in here. He won't see me then. Here we are. Peekaboo! <laughs> Shortcut. Oh, oh, ah, oh, oh! This gorse is coarse. Now, where is he? I've lost him! I've lost him! Oh, shh! Best not to scare him. Best not to scare him. There he is. Oh, mummy, mummy, don't worry. Uncle Jake's coming to the rescue. Now, if I just creep behind, nice and gently does it, get a bit closer. Here I am, I'm Jake. Now, you shouldn't be afraid at all, even when... Boom! I do that! Oh, he didn't even move a muscle. Oh, come on, Jake. 
No, Uncle Wendy, not Jake. Sorry, Wendy, I wasn't talking to you. Hey, you haven't seen my son by any chance. He's called Sam. Sam the Lamb. Small, white, curly, bleats a lot. Well, don't worry, Wendy. We've got our best dog on the case. OK, now then, that's it. Come closer. Now, my name is Jake the Sheepdog, and here is my life story. I was born four years ago, the oldest pup in a litter of one. My father was called Jake, and my mother was called Mrs Jake. And my favourite food is mud and sticks and... Oh, what was that? Oh, you want your mum? Oh, right you are. She's just across in the next field. That's right, just bleat as loud as you can and she'll hear you. Sam! Sam! That's it, Wendy. Sam, I can hear you. I'm coming, Sam. Oh, Sam! I thought I'd lost you. Come here to your mum, Sam. You must be hungry. Thank you, miss. You're welcome, Wendy. Now, say thank you to the big white doggy. Thank you, Uncle Jake. Oh, you're welcome, Sam. Well done, Uncle Jake. Oh, well done yourself, miss. Come on, Sam. Back to the flock with you. Oh, look at the little baba lump. Makes you feel proud to be a sheepdog, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Although, I'd quite like to be a beaver. They live in houses made of sticks and mud. <laughs> Imagine that! Oh, sounds like another one's lost. This time, I'll get the mum and you get the lamb. OK. Why's that? Because the last one just wouldn't stop talking. Oh, Uncle Jake. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? And we'll be here again to see Miss Dawn Windcutter die.